This video is going to be a look at some C.J. Stroud film through two weeks of the NFL regular season. Stroud has, has not had things easy so far in his rookie season. The Texans, they're dealing with a lot of injuries on both sides of the football, like many teams, but their offensive line in particular has had multiple injuries. R really not the ideal group for a rookie quarterback to come in and play behind. No disrespect towards the guys that have been playing, but it's reality. Uh, five sacks given up against the Ravens in week one, six sacks given up against the Colts in week two. Additionally, Damian Pierce has just not been able to get on track. Through two games, he's got 26 carries for uh, 69 yards, like 2.7 per carry, maybe almost 2.8. You've got a talented running back like Pierce who, who just can't find much space so far consistently. They had two drives, maybe one and a half drives against the Ravens where the run game was getting four or five yards a pop, but then it would get stacked up for one, and they're off track. Also, 11 sacks through two games, like I mentioned. The offensive line is just not playing well at all. That's just a, that's just a fact. Part of that is due to injuries and guys not being out there. Were they to have the full complement of the offensive line, Stroud and Pierce will be put in position to succeed. Now, having said all that, looking at those numbers, 11 sacks and a run game that can't get going, Stroud should be struggling, right? Well, he's not. He's had moments where he's really torn it up. Now, let's go over some of the stats, which I don't really like to do at the beginning of videos, but it's quarterback play, so that's all people are going to talk about is stats. I like to show the film and show the player playing and talk about that, but we will do that in a moment. 91 passes through two games is a lot. 64% completion percentage. I think it's like 63.8, 63.7. Only two touchdowns, but no interceptions, so he's taking care of the football. Oh, they do, he does have a fumble that I'll show you in this game against the Colts. 626 yards through two games looks pretty good, but it's only 6.9 or 6.8 yards per attempt, I think. When he's had time to go through the progressions, uh, Stroud has hit throws in the intermediate range. And you'll see a couple third down throws here that are really nice. On quick reads, he's sharp. Gets rid of the ball fast. You'll see evidence of that in the video, in particular the first play. One thing I want to mention before we get here, multiple guys getting the football in the pass game. Nico Collins, Robert Woods, and Tank Dell have 35 total catches through two games, including 22 first downs. Each one of them has 10 catches or more. Dalton Schultz, the tight end, only has six catches, but overall, 13 different players have at least one catch, if I, if I looked at the stats correctly. I think that's pretty impressive. I think it speaks to the fact that Stroud will get the ball to the open guy. Now, having said that, I'm sure that when he sees the right matchup in man, sees a particular player singled up, like Nico Collins on the backside, he'll go get him. Uh, but I don't think this is – I think this is a guy who does things the right way. I don't think he's a guy who predetermines the read and figures out, I want to throw it here no matter what coverage I get. If it's man, that's different. Not only is he smart and savvy, he's got all the physical talent. Great draft pick by the Texans. If you ask me, I know things are not working out well for them so far as a team, but let's get into some of the film. First catch here is first possession. Snag flat to Tank Dell at the top side of the screen. I think this is second play of the game, second and 13. Gets rid of the ball quick. He's seen a lot. You got motion out of the bunch, and Dell is going to run the little snag. Tight end, I think, is Schultz, runs out into the flats. Basically exchange outside, inside responsibilities. Outside guy runs the snag. Inside guy runs the shoot or the flat route. Ball's already out to the boundary. Snag flat is a great concept used at multiple levels, and Stroud has certainly uh, been exposed to it at Ohio State. Sec uh, still second play here, third and five. First possession is going to be a sack. Like six sacks given up against the Colts. It's a problem. Now they got to find a way to protect the guy better because he's playing well. So if they can limit some of the sacks, give him more opportunities to throw the football, they can generate more points on offense. Even though he did play well against the Colts, They've only had scored 29 points through two games. Of course, they played the Ravens defense in week one. Ravens are pretty talented. Third and four, second possession. Going to be complete to um, Nico Collins on a, a deeper slant down here to the bottom side. You got two backs in the backfield. In breaking route by Collins, 28 yards. Huge target guy who I think is ready to explode in 2023. I just love Stroud's decision-making. I'm not one who only looks at quarterbacks because I feel like that's not a real complete football analyst if you're only looking at quarterbacks. I like to look at as many players as possible in terms of offense, defense, and try to force myself or challenge myself, I should say, 
in terms of evaluating. One thing I look at with Stroud is he gets rid of the ball quick. His reads are decisive. Initially, he looked here, could have been looking at second level, third level, come back to our left, his right, already decided, boom, get rid of the football. On target, on time, getting it to a big athlete like Nico Collins out in space. Like I said, 28 yards. He's going to be a problem. I think he's going to have a great year. Same possession, second possession. Speed out by Tank Dell down at the bottom side of the screen. And Tank Dell is a, is a threat everywhere, but particularly on quick stuff. He's so quick, you kind of have to play off him at times. He's running a speed out, not a generic out where you're pressure cutting with your foot, kind of like at a 90-degree angle. Ends up being nine yards on first and 10, second possession still. <clears throat> this one's maybe a little bit low. Third and six, second possession still. Robert Woods. And the Texans like doing this a lot with receivers, with running backs. I saw, I thought I saw him do it once with a tight end. Put somebody in this wider position, you know, in line with the quarterback and the other running back. So you got multiple things that can happen. The first possession, you saw them kind of release opposite. In this case, you see Woods kind of running this little zig route to the boundary, presumably away from the nickel defender. So what a lot of teams like to do is put three, two or three receivers to the field, force the nickel defender to line up there, and then motion back to the boundary with one guy. Look for a favorable matchup. In this case, like I said, I think the ball's thrown a little low. And then finally, the touchdown to Nico Collins on third and six. Possibly could be a ball that's... It's actually targeted for Dell, I think, in the back of the end zone. But look at the catch radius by Collins. I mean, Stroud is playing well. He's going to play well. He just has that kind of ability. But it sure is an asset to have a guy like Nico Collins who can go up and get that thing like that. He's already open, and I think Stroud's trying to fit it to him. I mean, you can see Stroud is looking in that area. He's either looking at the linebacker or the receiver, trying to figure out where to throw the football. Settles on throwing it up high incredible catch give you the end zone angle of that i think as well maybe not third possession this is a miss uh tank dell maybe a miscommunication but in any case it's a ball that you know you would expect to be completed it's a, a blitz by the colts <clears throat> they are dropping a couple of guys out stroud's getting rid of the ball quick i mean dell is wide open and we miss him on a third and eight and have to punt fourth possession i really love this one play action under center i think it's a dig to um, <clears throat> Collins, the top side of the screen, yeah. And I love that he's getting the ball to Collins like out in front of him, so he can run onto the football and use his big body and big, you know, big momentum to continue running through contact. You're getting a essentially clear out route here, and then Collins is bringing this back in a little bit deeper than the arrow that I drew there. But Stroud is on time, no pressure. If they can get him clean looks to throw the football, I think he can just continue doing stuff like that. Fourth possession again. I think this one's Dell on another speed out up top, right-hand side. I love how quickly Stroud gets Tank Dell the football. Tank Dell's another guy for a rookie, I think, that's going to have a huge impact. So it's speed out up here. And then he puts his foot in the ground and comes back after catching a football. Great change of direction ability. And that's one of the advantages for, as a quarterback to get the ball to him quick. Give him more of a two-way go, which he has, to be able to bring this back to the inside. Pick up another couple extra yards. Fourth possession still. I think this is the best throw that I've seen him make in the two games. This is Robert Woods on a third and eight. Over the top of a defender. A uh, beautiful concept. I'll give you the end zone angle in a moment. This is going to be the last show, the last throw that I show. I don't think I need to show 35 throws um, of the 91 throws that he's had. But you can see that you've got basically a clear out route down here. I think that's Dell. And then Woods is bringing this to the sideline. Perfect trajectory and angle on the throw. Great hands by Woods to go up and get it. You guys let me know what you're thinking. I mean, if you're a Texans fan and you watch this long, first of all, thank you. Um, if you're not and you want to, you know, provide an alternate opinion, go right ahead. I think Stroud, when given time, is going to be able to execute stuff like this. And now all the Texans got to do is figure out a way to get Damian Pierce free, get the running game going, and then they can start to generate more points because they've got a quarterback that can make all the reads. 
that doesn't predetermine things, that can process coverages and find the open guy. And if they can get the run game started, Stroud can really look amazing, if you ask me. You guys let me know what you think of C.J. Stroud's start to the season, what you think of my breakdown, how I kind of try to analyze the plays. I think C.J. Stroud was a guy who was much maligned at a certain point right before the draft. That was a weird moment for me. I, I kind of wondered if maybe that was teams after the Texans who wanted to take him. But I know there was other people who thought it was legitimate criticism. If you see the arm strength, you see the ability to process things quickly and go through reads, get the football to athletes in the right spot. So far through two games, hasn't thrown an interception, although he did fumble the football. And he was under siege against the Ravens, especially early in the game. He's a tough-minded individual, if you ask me. I think the Texans did the right thing by taking him and Will Anderson, two guys who I called them cornerstones of the offense and the defense. And to me, it looks like C.J. Stroud is on pace to be just that. Appreciate you guys' time. If you think other Texans fans would enjoy this film study video, look at, at C.J. Stroud and his play so far, please consider grabbing a link to this content and sharing it out on social media to help this video get more reach.